The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 116 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Sunday, July 7th, 2019. I'm your host, Eric Young. I am not joined by my co-host, James Cush, today. This is a special edition of the podcast. Uh, recording the intro here on Sunday, but uh, last week before the Chicagoland race, I had a chance to meet up with somebody that we've talked about on the podcast a few times. Uh, Steve from Barron Speedway sat down with me right outside the victory lane at Chicagoland and chatted with me about his 164 scale racetrack that he's been working on. Uh, you can follow Baron Speedway on Instagram. You'll hear that from him as well on the podcast, but had a chance to sit down with him, chat with him about it. It's a pretty cool deal. Uh, I've been following his progress on there for the last uh, several weeks, and uh, he keeps coming along quite a bit. So had a chance to sit down with him, really enjoyed the conversation. And here you go with a special edition of the Super Speedway podcast with Steve from Baron Speedway. All right, I am sitting just outside of Victory Lane at Chicagoland Speedway with Steve Lester. Steve, this is a, a, an interview I've been looking forward to doing, excited about doing it. Um, we, we, my, my co-host James came across your Instagram page uh, with Baron Speedway, um, and he turn, turned me onto it. This has been something that I've been wanting to do my entire life. <laughs> so I think it's awesome that you've done it. Tell me a little bit about Baron Speedway, first of all. So... What I really want to do is make a true 164 scale track, um, something I've wanted to do since I was little, and I also wanted to be on a table. So you know, I had a post on there about a, an oval rug that I had in front of my fireplace, and that got to be you know, a little too much after some time. So <laughs> after I graduated college, I decided, okay, I'm going to build one. And so the room space was limited. Um, t- so the biggest I can get was a 0.4 mile track. but pretty much went from there and tried a bunch of different track surfaces and then landed on the one that I have now. Right. Are you using foam board? Yeah, insulation foam board, yep. That's awesome. So how long of a process has this been? Um, I started making it about the time of the Masters last year, so like last April or whatever it was. Okay. Um, and yeah, pretty much bought the foam board, cut it to the size I wanted, and then uh, calculated out the you know, track dimensions, drew them out, and then it really only took like five to six hours to cut okay um and then sanded it down and had the walls up and everything from the same day so it wasn't too terrible at all i know you talked in your instagram videos a little bit about some of the the aspects that helped you decide like angle of banking that sort of thing you wanted the cars Mm -hmm. not slide off it essentially how did you settle on the the setup that you have exactly well um Pretty much what I, I set up like a flat board and had an app on my phone that had a like a, a banking calculator on it, like pretty much like a, you know, a level of sorts. So that gave me the max angle and then I knew that I wanted that and the difficult part was then going to be the transition, the front stretch. So then I decided, okay, I'm going to bank the front stretch and kind of make that a little bit easier too. Um, but yeah, so I you know made the banking by pretty much making a triangle out of section knowing how high I had to go and how far and I was able to cut it there so I was able to stay pretty consistent awesome. based on making that small calculation what's been the response on social media so far are you continuing to get a following it's been a lot crazier than I thought it would be <laughs> so I wasn't even going to make an Instagram um, my wife has one and I, I was telling her I was like it would be cool to have a place to store some pictures of this just so I can have it or talk about it. she's like well, you should make an Instagram I'm like no I <laughs> I don't really want to. I've got my personal one. I barely even use that. So right. she said, no, you should really do it. So I did. And I was thinking, okay, you know, I'd be happy with 100 followers. And now we're at 1,200. And the response has been really, really great. And so I intended to make the, pur- the purpose of the track was um, for me to you know, help others build a track. Because I hadn't seen anything right. on the internet. You, know, you mentioned like slot car tracks. Um, I saw one that was from the 90s that was like a 1 100th scale or something like that. So there's a couple little things to go off of, but I really hadn't seen it for displaying 164 die cast. So um, yeah, I just decided to go ahead and create it, and the people started catching on naturally. And um, yeah, so I'm just really appreciative of everyone that's been following along, commenting with suggestions or like what they like, don't like, because it's, it's, all that has built into what it is now. Right. 
So have you found others that have done something similar now since you've done this, or are you still the only one out there? A few, yeah. Okay. So uh, there's someone I've been talking to that actually went to the store and bought the foam board. Okay. Um, some others who've been using the track out of different mediums, but some people are starting to do the bank turns, and you know it's it's been nice following along with them too to see what they're doing, and um, yeah, it's, they're doing a good job too. Did I see you just partnered with one of the um, stop motion guys too? Yeah. So he he followed me. He was one of the first ones, and so we kind of like, you know, he would comment, like we'd, we'd talk a little bit back and forth, stuff like that, and right. he was saying that, you know, a lot of people who followed him were saying, hey, you know, it'd be cool if you partnered with Baron Speedway to do a stop motion, and I was having the same thing of, hey, you should do a stop motion, but I don't have the time to really do a stop motion series like some of the guys do, right. so, yeah, we were able to work it out, and um, probably took about five maybe eight hours to do all the pictures and set everything up, so it was time consuming but worth it. I think it turned out well and it was received well too. That's awesome. Yeah. So you said your wife, mm -hmm. what does she think of this whole thing? She, she's she's for it, yeah, she, she loves it. She loves that there's a creative aspect that I'm working on. Right. Um, and it, she's she's been lo loving it. Like I go to her with like different you know, ideas, like you know, how do you think this would work? And she's like, oh, I think that'd be good. And, yeah, so she's been supportive the whole way. She's helped you with some of the lettering on the walls and stuff? Yes, yep. Yeah, so she does a hand lettering. Um, and so, but she has her own her account that um, I reference a couple times. But yeah, so she did all the hand lettering on the walls, turns, and then a couple slogans and stuff. Okay. Did you think it was going to get this big? I mean, did you think, did you have any idea that people would be this interested in it for one and, and that you'd be able to put all this together? Like you have? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> um, I didn't realize that there's a big of a market even on Instagram of people that are just die cast, collectible die cast and stuff. So, you know, that on top of just random people following. We've had a couple of drivers come and comment and That's awesome. uh, follow along. So it's, it, it, yeah, I wasn't expecting it one bit. <laughs> so I know you're still working on it. I, you had, uh, you put some groove down the other day I saw. Yeah. Um, you've been doing, they had the burnouts and everything. What's next at Baron Speedway? So I bought some stuff for a catch fence. Okay. So I'm actually uh, taking a lot of pictures here <laughs> too, um, just to you know what, what details could I add? What you know what kind of sort what sort of thing am I missing? So little things like from here might pop up, but yeah, I'm looking at the catch fence, and then I've been working on a 3D CAD drawing of a big grandstand in the front stretch. Nice. So I actually have a thousand little people I'm going to be gluing down and it's going to be 30 flights of stairs um, and then a media center and spotter stand at the top so it's going to be pretty big so that might be you know leaning towards late summer into the fall right and I start working on that do you have kids at all no when you do are you going to let them play with it or is this yeah. okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'll probably bring it down to their level and then let them play around with it yeah so I assume obviously since you you've done this and you you've referenced that you were you know played with cars when you were younger that you've been a NASCAR fan for a long time mm -hmm. um, how did you get into it and, and I guess tell me about your history as a NASCAR fan yeah so it's actually the 1997 Daytona 500 I was okay. over at a friend's house for their birthday party and all the dads happened to be in the one room watching it and so you know, I had cars that I played with and stuff but I didn't never see it I'd never seen anything about the NASCAR at all so I walk in and I'm like, okay, there's all these cars going around the track. Like this is pretty cool. So at the time, I didn't know like what my favorite color was. Uh -huh. And the 24 car was leading and had you know the Rainbow Warrior paint scheme. So I'm right. like, okay, that's that's my guy. I want him to win, <laughs> and he won the thing. So I was just you know followed along and watched on TV a little bit here or there. But then it really started um, right around you know 99, 2000, watching it more and um, have just I went to my first race actually in 99, I think so. Okay. Um, I saw Dale Jr. win there, and that was at Dover. So okay. That was really neat. So I so went to Bush Series race, and then in 2000, I went to Dover again in uh, 2001, 2004. Okay. Yep. Have you been to Bristol at all? No. I, I was curious, because there's a lot, obviously a lot of rep, uh, you know, similarities between your track and Bristol or, or Dover, for example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who are you cheering for now? I see you've got the Jordan Anderson shirt on tonight. Yeah, so I'm a big Jordan Anderson fan. I've been okay. following him on social media for a while, and I just love like how organic he is. And you know, I talked with him actually a little bit a little while ago, and he just you know came up right to the fence. We were chatting for a little bit, and I can't believe that you know drivers are like that. It's my first experience being in the infield. Yeah. Um, but yeah, rooting for him. 
Um, yeah, Xfinity Series, rooting for Chastain, just, you know, I like to see him go. Rooting from the trucks too, but. Right. Um, and then the Cup Series, I've been, I've still been uh, a little unsure ever since Jeff Gordon retired, so it's been a while for me to make up my mind, but I've been rooting for Chase Elliott mostly. Okay. I kind of want to stick with Hendrick Motorsports. Okay. Yeah. What advice do you have for people if they if they want to try to do something like this, if they want to try and build a track like this? Um, I would say, you know, just measure out your space first, you know, see how big of a track you want to make it, and then, you know, budget out, like, what you want to spend on it. So it's in materials for my, the, the, the board and the table legs, I've probably spent 150 bucks. So it's really, you, you have to be willing to put the time in um, in order to do it, but it's it's fun. If you make a flat track, it's fun, you know, just don't, don't let your imagination stop you because you can just keep on going, finding little things here and there. What was the biggest challenge, I guess, for you doing this? Uh, I'd say the transitions. Okay. So I started my turns kind of in the backstretch section of my track. So, so my track can be disassembled into four pieces and stored on a wall pretty easily. Um, that also helped allow me to move it whenever <laughs> I move to a house. So um, yeah, I think the transitions going from the straightaways to the turns were the trickiest because I didn't have the constant angle that I could stick with. I had to kind of bend it down. Okay. And your the foam cutter is a flexible wire, so it's you, you got to be a little bit gentle on that section, bringing it down. I only had four pieces to work with. I didn't give myself any extra, so it's all or nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. It, definitely, if you guys haven't checked it out, we've talked about it on the podcast a bunch of times. Check it out. Where can they find you? Uh, so. At Baron Speedway on Instagram and also on YouTube, uh, Baron Speedway. Go ahead and spell it for me. So. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> B-E-H-R-E-N-D Speedway. Awesome. Yep. Um, anything else you want to tell our listeners? Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for your interest in this and um, really appreciate the interview. And, yeah, I hope you guys really enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. Definitely check it out. And, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for talking with us today. Absolutely. Yep. And once again, big thanks to Steve for coming on and sitting down with us and chatting with us on the Super Speedway podcast at Chicago Land Speedway. He got to enjoy the weekend. Unfortunately, he had to bolt out a little early before the uh, the rain delayed race on Sunday. Um, but it was nice talking to him, hoping to get a chance to head out to his place uh, sometime, maybe next winter. I end up in that part of the state quite a bit. Um, maybe get a chance to check out the track. And when I do, I'll post some pictures. But definitely follow him on Instagram if you haven't. He's on Twitter as well. It's worth checking out. Very cool deal that he's doing there. We appreciate him sitting down with us. Uh, in the meantime, we are at Kentucky Speedway this week. There will be, uh, we'll have a recap of the podcast or recap of the Kentucky Speedway weekend on the podcast next week. So look, at, look for that on Tuesday or Wednesday. James will be back. And we'll talk about what happened at Kentucky Speedway. Uh, in the meantime, you can find us on social media. If you want to follow James on Twitter, he is at James Cush. You can follow me at T Super Speedway on Twitter. You can follow the podcast on Facebook.com slash The Super Speedway. Our website is thesuperspeedway.com. You can find show notes on there, some articles this week from Kentucky Speedway and the action going on there, uh, as well as recaps following the weekend. You can find the show notes on there as well, links to the articles that we talk about on the podcast, and you can find all the podcasts on there as well. Uh, you can find the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud, wherever you listen to us today. We hope that, that you subscribe and continue to listen. And if you want to become a part of the podcast or help us out getting to the track or uh, getting getting things going here, uh, visit us at patreon.com slash the super speedway and become a patron. There's all kinds of different packages there that you can uh, become a part of the show with. So we'd appreciate everybody who's followed along so far. Appreciate everybody who sticks around and listens to us. Uh, if you like what you hear, give us a review on iTunes or Google Play or wherever and send us a tweet. Visit the website. There, our email addresses are on there as well. Definitely hit us up. Uh, we always like to hear from our fans. And if you see us at a track, don't forget to come up and say hello. I'll be back uh, at Michigan International Speedway for the August race. Uh, as I said, I'm at Kentucky Speedway this weekend. So all kinds of stuff coming from there. But if you see me out there, give us a big hello. Uh, until then, everybody, we will be back next week to talk about Kentucky and break it all down the Quaker State 400 weekend. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. Oh, 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 oh,